<laughs> What's up? It's your girl Kia and welcome back to the Insecure Cafe and we are going to cover episode six of Insecure season four called Low Key Done. So here in the cafe today we have the wonderful Keisha Boyd and the beautiful Chalette and they are going to get the conversation started with me. So do we think that Issa should feel bad about getting help from Nathan because during the argument Molly basically made her seem like a scrub? Absolutely not. I think that she used her resources wisely. So no, she should not question um, her, I mean, she, her intentions were good and genuine. And what she, would, she wasn't doing it to harm Molly. She was actually, you know, adhering to her wishes, not to get her involved. So no, I think she did right. I would have done the same damn one thing. Shoot. Absolutely. Mm -mm. Chilla? Same. Like, when at an event at that level, there's so much on the line. I mean, shoot. It, there's no limit, barely any limit to the things that you will do to make an event that magnitude, you know, pop off successfully. So, and I think I think Molly's words really got to her because Nathan offered. She didn't ask him. He offered to help. So just by her hearing Molly's words being in her head, we now see a downward spiral of Issa trying to help everybody. Like, what was with the pregnant girl at the grocery store? What was that all about? Is that like a new pregnancy grifter thing she'll let the girls do trying to get free groceries? I've never seen that before in my life. Girl, I don't know. I might, you know, might look like I'm pregnant once in a while when my pot belly's out, but uh, I ha I I've never seen it. Um, and she just, uh, Issa just feels guilty. You know, those words, you're selfish, you're selfish, you're selfish, are ringing in her head, and she's trying to get right with the universe, but, you know, these random, right. random Cause that, right. Yeah, because that random ride with the old man, he would have got out of my car because he was Thank talking too much trash. Brother, don't you touch my, are you touching my air? What are you, all these requests, sir? Uh -uh. He's old. He's like an old. Old people are are, are kind of crotchety sometimes, and he was a crotchety old man. But I think that was one time during this thing when she was like, "I did something good because the guy, old man, ended up going to go see his son." Right? That's what it seemed like. So she's Correct. like, "Okay, I did something good." So yeah. next she goes to the like the sip and paint thing, and she brought her jug of wine. Shout out to all my jug of wine drinkers. That's a lot of alcohol. And she sees the bachelorette party, and she sits with them, and they're like, oh, you got wine, let's vibe. And then she got, she got Wait. a bachelorette prank. Keisha, you and I are both married. I've never done that to anybody. I can't I've never even that. heard of that, OK, until I saw it. And when she pulled up, you know, and she was about to go off and was, I was like, ooh, ooh, she mad? Oh, she's not really doing that. <laughs> but I felt her, though, because that's like, no, you didn't. You know, that was crazy. That was crazy. They really, and they really were bonding and like, you know, that's her a little phrase and all those things. And then to dine and dash. No, I'm sorry. Never. I think it that was. Never I happen. think under normal circumstances, it wouldn't have been hurtful. But because Ma Issa had just lost her really, really good friend, and now she's vibing with what could be these new groups of friends, who then almost treat her like Molly just did. Like you're not a person. You're not good enough. You're not this. We're just good enough for to pay for the tab. I mean, that's gotta be. That is a gut wrenching feeling, which now leads Issa to her mom's house. Um, mm -hmm. Talking about the beautiful Wendy Raquel Robinson, who I don't think is ever aging. I'm not sure what voodoo priestess she made a deal with, but let me tell you, she made the same. She made the deal that uh, her and Lorenz Tate made the same deal. Child, okay, because <laughs> okay? that man don't age either. But yeah, that was that was. I, I mean, I knew that that was going to happen when she went over there and laid her head. She was going to ball out crying because she hasn't released it. You know, that was her release and her safe place and a mama knows her child. So she knew something was up. So I'm, I'm glad that she did have her mom to talk to. And the power of a mom, I don't think a lot, like I make jokes about my mom all the time because I just have to. But when I am feeling down, my mom has this weird radar. Like she can sense it from miles away. And if I come to her house, it's like, oh, come here. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. they don't like me and they're mean to me and I'm not sure why. And I'm a grown woman and it still has that same effect. Yeah. yeah. And, and, yeah. Then, and then they also had a really good conversation where Issa's mom was just like, girl, at 30, I didn't want y'all. I didn't want to be a mom and a wife. I happen to be a mom and a wife and I love y'all, but this wasn't my plan. Right. <laughs> but I mean, but she also said, you know, you're the best thing that ever happened to me too, you know? So I'm glad that it happened. 
Um, but I think that, you know, I'm interested to see. So, and, and then I'm, I'm sure you're transitioning into when she goes to this restaurant. Yes. Uh, well, not even just that. But Issa kind of comes to a really happy place. I feel like an amazing place of, I am an actual cultural curator. Those awful bachelorettes made a good point. I am a cultural curator. I can make this a thing. Yes. And then she runs into Molly and it's just like, ugh. So like, did you see that like fear backtrack in her mind real quick? Yeah. So it, I think it was just so jarring for her to see Molly inside their favorite restaurant. And Molly was just carrying on, going on with her life, you know, kicking with whoever was on the phone and wasn't experiencing that loss that Issa is feeling, right? So, I mean, she clammed up and left. And that was really, I was disappointed because that was a really great opportunity for them to have a heart to heart. Like there's nobody else in the restaurant. Go sit down with your girl and talk. Um, <clears throat> I think um, that, that, but I think that Molly is suffering too. I think that Molly has more things to cover up because she has a career, she has, you know, things going on or whatever, but, and she might not look as vulnerable maybe as Issa, because we see Issa differently in the show, but I definitely think that Molly is suffering. I mean, anybody that loses a friend, a, close, a best friend, I don't care if it's for two days or, or, you know, two minutes and you think you lost your best friend, it's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And that leads us to kind of close up a little bit because I feel like what's going to happen in the next episode is going to start off with Molly sitting in this Ethiopian restaurant complaining about how sad she is about being alone and being here by herself. And it's going to flow into her trip with Andrew and how she's feeling out of place but in place and not sure about herself. So I can't wait to the next episode because I want to see more of Molly and how she's feeling. And I'm hoping we get to see Andrew without a shirt on. That's, that's awesome. Yay. Okay. 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 <laughs> Please, we are asking and begging you to join the conversation. Let me do this right. The comments on this side. Not this right. Side. <laughs> the conversation. So you can um, be a part of this. Please watch Insecure on Sunday. We cannot wait to see you guys next week for the next Insecure Cafe. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.